I think, are we live? We live. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I start this every time the same way. Are we live? I don't know if we're live. And you do understand I'm not good at computers. I'm not good at this. I'm never sure when the red light comes on whether it should be flashing or whether it should be still. Anyway, that's my excuse. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and welcome to our little YouTube channel. Uh, this morning, as usual, we are, have Gregor, who is standing to my right side. And uh, so we're saying good morning to him. To my far right, we have Carolyn. Say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Carolyn. And we do have Al also in Colorado. Uh, Al, can you say good morning to us? Good morning, everyone. And uh, we do have Choro, who's just leapt off the sofa uh, in disgust. Because, I don't know why, because probably because I'm wriggling about and he can't get comfortable. All right, so uh, spring is here. Yoo hoo hoo And uh, I just want to say, before we get carried away with anything else, thank you for all of your birthday wishes, your well wishes. Of course, Al was late with his birthday wishes. Uh, just mentioning that. Uh, you forgot, didn't you, on the day? Don't you hate <laughs> I, that? I, yeah. I would never forget you. Don't you? Yes, <laughs> well, you did. Don't you hate it when you know it's someone's birthday or an anniversary or something and you say to yourself for weeks beforehand, I must remember, must remember. And even the day before, you think, I must remember to call that person tomorrow. And then the day after you should have called, you think, oh, I forgot to call that person. And that's what happened, right, Al? I know. I know you remembered because I kept reminding you over and over and over again. Uh, we had just uh, just because uh, we've had lots of inquiries. How did the party go? How did the English tea go? And it went really well. We do have. Can you, can you hot give those to me, please, Carol? There, there. We do have. Which I'm going to sh going to just show you these. Can you see those, Al? Oops. I don't want to tip them so they fall off the plate. Can you see them, Al? I can. Yes. Delicious English scones. <laughs> which i'm going to show you how to eat all of you in england are thinking what is she talking about showing people how to eat them but people in america do not eat scones in the same way that people here do we have a different way of doing it we have the english proper way of doing it oh uh, uh and so on the table i have some whipped cream hand me the cream now carolyn what do you have to say about this cream just I'm this is this is heavy whipped cream. What do you have to say about this cream? It's the most delicious looking cream I've ever seen, and I wish I had one of those cartoon tongues that reached out <laughs> to just swipe some. <laughs> well, look, see what I'm going to do now. Huh? And that oh, God, it's so good. So we have the cream. <laughs> I'll put that down there for me. They're saying tip those things over our way. We have butter, and uh, we have some. Uh, I think this is red currant jelly. Yes, we have all these things to put on those scones. Any minute now, we're going to show you how to eat them. I'm going to eat them right in front of you all, which is not a nice thing to do, is it? But, hey, you know. Uh, and um, can you imagine all, the, all that stuff? And we have butter as well. All that stuff is going to go on the scone. I'm going to show Carolyn how to eat them. And then I'm going to show you Carolyn as she eats one. How about that? We We're want, getting some comments here. We, we want to see you actually put it in your mouth once I've loaded it up for you. So I'm going to show you how the English, we eat, we eat our English scones. Now, when I say English scones, I have to point out that in America, they do have scones, and very often they have wonderfully delicious scones. English scones are very different. They are very, very different. They're smaller for one thing, and uh, and we eat them differently. So, all right. Uh, now, Al, have you got anything to say so far? Do you wish you were here at my table? Uh, you know, I'm. I was hungry going into the call, and this is it. Really, <laughs> that's not well, nice, is it? <laughs> people are, are, are commenting that it's cruel and unusual punishment. No, um, yeah. Yes, but not for me. Not, <laughs> not, for, not for you, but for all your viewers and myself. Okay. For sure. Well, we did have a fabulous uh, array of food. We are going to send some photos out on Facebook once I can figure out how to do it. You have to help me later. Uh, and uh, we did have salmon on croute. I made some delicious roast chicken breasts with, uh, they are, I seasoned them with curry and uh, herbs and black pepper and sounds horrible but 
It doesn't sound horrible. Was delicious, and I sliced it up. It was really, they, it was delicious. I made my special uh, tangy sauce. I'm going to give you that recipe now. If you've got a pencil, or I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll give it to you now. I'll give it to you later as well because this is the best sauce you will ever taste for fish or chicken. You can even put it on cold roast beef or even hot roast beef actually i sat here one day i decided i was making some salmon and i thought what kind of sauce can i make and i opened the refrigerator door and i saw some stuff so uh it's sour cream and uh sweet chili sauce not regular chili sauce sweet chili sauce and worcester sauce in america they say worcestershire sauce but in england we say we know how to pronounce it we say worcester sauce and um so it's I'm going to give you just a, a you know eight ounces of um, eight ounces of sour cream. Don't use the light cream; it's not as good. Eight ounces of sour cream, four ounces of sweet chili sauce, and two ounces of Worcester sauce. You see what happens is every time you put something in, you halve the amount of what you put in before. So it's a very simple recipe: eight, four, two, eight of of um, of sour cream four of sweet chili sauce, and two of Worcester sauce. Now, why are we talking cooking when this show is really not about cooking at all, except that I had so much fun with Grey Eagle in my kitchen on Saturday. I'd cooked most of the stuff, so we had all of that good food, and I made a delicious um, potato salad, which is my daughter's favorite, the way I make it. Yes, the recipe is in the book. All the recipes are in the book. And I made some... Uh, um, cheddar cheeses which are little tiny uh, cheese biscuits which are also good to go with that and then for dessert it was ridiculous because we had the scones when Trey had to make those we had um, ginger uh, biscuits we had English shortbread we had you name it we had it we had pastry filled with apple and uh, whipped cream didn't they look good? Yes they did uh, everything looked delicious <laughs> even the fish and I don't care for fish um, I have to tell you that uh, Carolyn knows how everything looks, but she really doesn't know how everything tasted. And it was so, it was good. And we had lots and lots of fun. All right. We are now moving away from food until we come back to eat these scones any minute. Now we're going to have a couple of questions. I'm going to show you how to do the scones. Then we're going to come back to more questions. So let's go. Uh, Carolyn, let's go for you first, you shall we? It. I do have a question, but real quick, did you want to say anything to Linda? She's actually not able to make it next Wednesday. You were supposed to speak with her this afternoon. She's watching now. That's why I'm bringing it up. Oh, I'm so sorry, Linda. So we're going to have this to. Is, this is one of our winners. And we did try to organize this for today. And unfortunately, with everything going on, and Carolyn wasn't here yesterday, I wasn't aware that I had an appointment with you, my darling. So I'm very, very sorry. And I made another arrangement. So, but... Don't worry, because we'll fix it. We'll fit you in. We try to get you in next Wednesday. You can't do it. That's okay. You let us know what dates you can do, and we'll make sure. I hope you've got your question ready. I'm so excited to give the winners a little taste of whatever it is we do here. I hope you're as excited as I am, Linda. All right, so let's right. have a question. Shall we go forward? Dean has the first question. Good. <laughs> yeah, the food's on the table, Dean, I know. <laughs> and he also, he also has sent you a very nice little video about happy birthday. Oh, I'm not, we just not, I, I, I've not seen it yet, but thank you, darling. What's the question? How does rest work in the spirit world? Do people still need to rest, sleep, or meditate? That's a really good question. I don't know whether people need sleep, but certainly we do need, all of us, we need those times when we have to build, build our energy, where we have to replenish uh, the energy that we're using. We require, we humans require sleep for the physical body, because if we didn't have sleep if the physical body didn't have sleep then we'd see you know everything would start to break down eventually so you know we because because on a physical level we you know we have to have that rest we we have to have that you know that downtime to to you know so that our organs can take rest our heart can beat a little slower etc etc but our soul does not need rest in the same way that's a very good question and i don't think dean anyone's asked me that question before so not sleep we don't need sleep in it in in the form that in our human form we would need it but certainly we need time 
to, you know, for meditation, for recuperation, for us to build our energy. Very, very often when people uh, pass, if they've suffered with a long illness, for instance, and their energy is depleted, not just their physical energy, but their spiritual and emotional energy is depleted, very often they're taken to, you know, very uh, special places where they can recoup, where they can uh, become restored and where they can build back their energy because after all as we know energy is everything thank you for that question it's a great question al do you have a question here so priscilla asked kind of a, a related question uh do people eat good morning the, priscilla do people eat in the spirit plane uh i have heard he has heard that they recharge on light uh can you talk about that well, we don't need, again, it's, it is a very similar question, isn't it? Do we need sustenance? Do we need sleep? Do we need, you know, do we, do, do we you know, I'm, I'm sure that Grey Eagle is eyeing those uh, scones uh, that we have on the table here. I'm laughing really. But, but uh, and when I'm in the kitchen with him and he's helping me, you know, sometimes I cook things that I actually personally don't eat, so I need a lot of help. Do I, do I have I put enough salt in this? What do you think about that? Does this need five more minutes in the oven? And so we work together, and he enjoys working in the kitchen with me. We have a lot of fun working in the kitchen and so on. But does he want to eat the food? Well, you know, with your eyes you can eat. With every one of your senses you can discover, you know, that even with your taste, when you're meditating and one of the lessons that we're going to be doing on our um, on our in our classes is you know developing our uh, five senses in order to allow our sixth sense to kick in and one of those senses is the sixth is the is the uh, sense of taste and you can actually by visualization and meditation techniques you can actually taste things without actually putting anything in your mouth at all memory serves but sometimes even if you don't have a memory or you've never tried a food before if you if you if you work on building your senses and building your you know joining all of your senses together with smell with touch with you know listening to whatever's going on inside of you you can actually experience the taste of something without actually ever having tasted it before interesting right so uh, do those in the spirit world need food they do but not the kind of sustenance that we you know know but i don't i've never now i've I could be wrong, but I've never ever known anyone in the spirit world tell me they sat down to a plate of roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Mm. Uh, not in the spirit world, anyway. Uh, that sounds really good. I could just eat that. <laughs> could you just eat that? Anyway, right. All right. Uh, so, good question. Um, Carolyn. We've got Adrian. Good morning, Adrian. She asks My family and I are moving to Panama City, Florida in August. Oh. I have never lived in an area where there are hurricanes. Can you tell me if this year will be bad for hurricanes? I'm kind of nervous. Well, I can understand why you're nervous, uh, actually. Who is this again? Her name is Adrian. Adrian. I can understand, Adrian, why you're nervous because, you know, hurricanes aren't great. Tornadoes are also not great. Almost everywhere in the country and almost everywhere in the world, there are every country has its own you know issues and every state in this country has its own issues i mean you know tornadoes are not unheard of in england uh and you know there are lots of that people talk about florida like it's the most deadly place on earth and it actually isn't the most deadly place on earth in fact one of the believe it or not one of the most deadly places on earth could be australia because they have those awful little spiders that crawl all over everywhere and they're deadly things and you can be in a restaurant and someone can just suddenly stamp the foot and you've got one of those things i mean everywhere you go I and mean, i love australia i'm not saying australia's um, yeah i love australia i've been to australia a couple of times i love it i love the people but everywhere you go you can find something now as long as you pay attention to the rules of the game so when if it's, there's a hurricane coming you make sure that you've got what is it storm shutters for the windows you do you you follow just follow the rules and you know it's it's very rare that that um anywhere gets hit the house that i'm in was uh, almost not quite but almost destroyed with a hurricane in 1980 something and 
when I bought the house, I figured lightning does not necessarily strike twice in the same place. So maybe I'm just going to be okay here. But can you think about those things? There are so many other things that you should be concentrating on. The beaches, for instance, the sunshine, the you know, all of the things that are wonderful about Florida or wherever it is you live. Instead of thinking of the negatives, think of the positives and try not to worry about the things that you can't change. If if lightning strikes, it's meant to be. It's just meant to be. And, you know, when, when it's your turn, it's your turn. So, you know, make the most of the good things about life. And you'll love Florida if you have that mindset and you make the most of Florida. You're going to love every minute of it because it's just great. I know there are people who come here on a whim. They stay for three months and say they can't stand it and they go back home. Um, it's about the mindset. If you're intent on enjoying yourself and finding the best in life, wherever you live in the world, you'll find the best. If you have a negative mindset, wherever you live, you're not going to be happy. And it's as simple as that. Al, do you want to say anything about that? Because Al just moved. Mm. Give me those scones while Al's talking. <laughs> Is there anything yeah. So we moved to Colorado and we, we are absolutely loving it. But, uh, you know, in, in New York, you had, had uh, where I used to live, you had nor'easters. And here you have potential of, uh, you know, tornadoes. We had a hailstorm the other day. Um, there are rattlesnakes here. I've never encountered a rattlesnake. So, like, you know, there we. There are rattlesnakes <laughs> in, uh, in Vermont. Let yeah. me tell you. The rattlesnakes yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Exactly. You just have to take the best, right, Al? Correct. And, uh, you know, the ability to get out in the mountains and, and uh, you know, live live life to the fullest out well, here. Every time is, I talk to you, going hiking somewhere. Yes. Like <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. I'm just going to show you how to do these because nice serrated edge, little scone. You can see how tiny it is, but we're going to slice it down the middle like this. Oops. Nice and crumbly. We've got two halves. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, we're going to butter them first. So, Carolyn, um, let's, I, I'm going to do one. How about that? Then you can do this. So, we, lots of butter for me. Okay. Lots of butter for you, too. Yes, I love butter. Right. I always, uh, anybody would think heart attack coming along there. I'm going to put the jam on the top like that. There we go. Nice double of jam there. I don't know what a double is. I've never used that word before. <laughs> and to finish off, da 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 da. And oh, all right. Did you do that? Are you ready for this? Just waiting on the spoon. Carolyn's mm -hmm. done the same with hers. Oops, I'm dripping. We need napkins. We've got those right in front of you. And a bite. I'm dripping jam. Cheers. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Don't, don't do a thing. Okay, I'm not. I'm going to put the camera now on Carolyn. Oh. Get in there. Ready? you got cream all over your nose. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. Mm. Sorry, Al. <laughs> the raisins are so fun mm, and juicy. Yeah. Um, People are going to hate us. Yeah, these are. Can you give me another napkin there? People are wondering what kind of scones. I like to use raisins. I like to plump my raisins. Um, and, um, oh, golly. It's delicious. Uh, Al, while we're eating. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to interrupt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> While we're eating, I'm going to take one more bite. Do you want to ask? Uh, um, God, these are good. Do you want to ask another question? Sure. We have a, a question from. Uh, speaking of Vermont, Chris actually, um, she she says in reviewing Soul Signs material, I wondered if Rosemary wasn't an Earth sign. How might the book material have changed? What? For instance, how would a fire sign have described the earth sign? Oh, you mean if it weren't an earth sign? Sorry. You mean if it weren't an earth sign writing the book? 
If it was yeah. actually a fire sign writing the book. Correct. Who knows? You want me to get inside the head of a fire sign? <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I've heard of that. I live with my mother for years. Uh, <laughs> um, I think it's inevitable that um, an earth sign would have to write this book. For those of you who are listening and wondering, what are you talking about? Soul Signs is uh, a book that I wrote with Gregor a few years ago, and we just had it republished as a workbook. And um, it's, it's Carolyn, do you want to say anything? It's her best book, in my opinion. It's her favorite book of all time, not just mine, but anybody's, right? It's yeah. it's her best, very, it's her very favorite book. Um, it's it's a brilliant book because it tells us all about um, uh, relationships of any and every kind. It deals with relationships of any and every kind and really puts perspective out. Would you say that? It does. It, it, it allows you to kind of put perspective and learn about yourself and how uh, and others as well and how you relate uh, to those those around you family yeah. friends anyone it explains people's behavior it explains you know so many things it explains your own behavior uh it helps you de to decide if you're if you're not with someone if you don't have a partner it helps you to figure out why a relationship went wrong and what you need to do and what kind of a partner you need to to have in your future it's a it's just a brilliant book but it, I it also, yeah it also allows you to reflect because you don't often reflect on yourself and your relationships and it almost forces you in a good way to reflect on your own personality and how you relate to others when you wouldn't normally do that and the workbook probably helps even more well, it just gives the work it just gives space to make notes and to you know to uh you know to, to to mark places that are you know that you find of interest or that you want to go back to or that you want to remember and so on um so you know so it's it's you know that's pretty good to have that is pretty good um but i think honestly chris to answer your question i think it had to be it has to be a book written by an earth sign because earth signs are people who we're very organized we have uh you know we we have certain criteria we you know we have a plan we put the plan in place and this book is is certainly needed planning and certainly needed the understanding and the and the grounded the grounded the grounded attitude uh, that uh, earth signs have that require you to understand and also to be um, to to be uh, open to because okay let's put it this way that the the most difficulty i have with people are with a fire signs earth signs and fire signs we just don't get on they don't like us we don't like them but you know when you raise yourself up and you understand more about things you know it's very easy one of my closest friends is a, is a fire sign and it helps me knowing about soul science helps me to understand her and to understand where she's coming from and to not be judgmental and i think it's easier for earth signs to not be judgmental earth signs and um water signs i think it's easier for them to not be judgmental air signs and particularly fire signs do tend to jump first you know and and think later there more driven by their emotions so interesting question chris but i think i've answered it uh carolyn well somebody asked light switch asked what is my soul sign so maybe you could explain light that. switch get the book figure it out <laughs> get the light switched when you read the book i i, I make it a, a point i i won't say i've never told anyone what their soul sign is and and those of you who are sort of learning about this for the first time please understand that um uh this we're not talking about uh, astrology we're not talking about you know um star signs we're talking about soul signs different thing of course everything connects with everything else but still it's a very different thing and it explains the kind of energy that you were 
born with, how you were, how your soul was created, what type of energy your soul is created from, and so on, which makes you who you are. And um, so I make it a point of tr trying not to give people their soul signs. You have to read the book and figure it out for yourself. But there is a golden rule to this book, and so many people I've spoken to do not get the golden rule they forget the golden rule there are there are 13 soul signs basically and instead of you know uh reading there well there are, there are five let me do this again there are five different energy groups and there are 13 soul signs and there are three soul signs within each of those groups so 12 when i say 12 soul signs i'm talking about 12 main soul signs the 13th we're not going to talk about today we're not interested in for very a variety of reasons and when you read the book you'll understand but within each so, um, soul group in other words within each type of energy there are three soul signs to choose from so first of all the golden rule is choose your soul group do you come from the energy of earth the energy of water the energy of air or the energy of uh, whatever the other one is, I missed Air, it. Fire. Fire, thank mm -hmm. you. See, I try to block it out because it's the one I don't get on <laughs> with the most. <laughs> on a subconscious level, I forget it's there. All right, so so um, you choose your soul group first, the type of energy that you are, and then it's easy because then you've only got three soul signs to choose from. A lot of people like to just read all 12 soul signs and they'll say, well, that's me. Oh, wait a minute, but that's me. Wait a minute, but that's me. Because we are all so similar in so many ways. But once you've got your soul group, you only have a choice of three. One, you will eliminate immediately. I can guarantee it, right, Carolyn? That's so true. Yes. One, you will say, that is definitely not me. You'll be left with two. You might go back and forth a little bit, which is which, which is me. You count up the, the all of the... Um, the traits that are, are you in each of those two and you see which one you are most like and that then that's you and you've discovered it. So the golden rule, group first, the type of energy that you are first, do not be tempted to read all 12 soul signs until you've figured out who you are. Once you've figured out who you are, then you start to figure out who everybody else is in your life. Then you'll see all the other differences and so on and so forth. But you need to know what kind of energy drives you. So, light, light bulb? Mm -hmm. What's it? What is it? Light bulb? Is your name's light bulb? Oh, light switch. Light switch. Right. Well, read the book and the light should come on for you. <laughs> so all right so al next question I'm, I'm having another nibble at this well i'm having a nibble at this so Ma margretta asks and i know you can't say hi margretta because you have scone in your mouth <laughs> so, <laughs> um, if if a person who and has all of those people who think oh my god she's licking her fingers <laughs> how rude of her <laughs> Look, the only way to eat good food is to lick your fingers. You should see me and, with that stuff. And they're that good, right? Well, I think so. Oh, oh my gosh, they're delicious. You've never had one before, have you? Just at, like, the grocery store, and the those are... I was <laughs> expecting it to be hard, because the few that I have had have been very hard, and that was not hard. Lovely, crumbly, delicious. Mm. Go on, Margaret. <laughs> if a person Margaret. Ma Margretta. Margretta. Yes. Okay, good morning. All right. If a person who has crossed leaves behind the person they loved but were not married, how do they deal with fidelity to their loved one if the passionate love remains for that person? You're gonna to have to repeat that question because I'm not quite sure I understand it. If a person who has crossed leaves behind the person they loved but they were so not a married. Person, a person has passed to the spirit world and they leave behind them. The person they loved. Someone that they love, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. How do they deal with fidelity to their loved one if the passionate love remains for that person? Remains for the person who's passed or remains for the person who's here? That, that I don't know. Margaret did email the office. Um, okay. She did lost her life partner. She lost her life partner 
and she's asking basically is her partner going to be faithful i see um well uh you you talked about love so i'm, I'm going to go on that when someone passes into the spirit world and they leave their loved ones behind if they love you they're going to be true to you um why wouldn't they be they're going to nurture you and they're going to care for you now actually um marguerite um margaret margretta correct uh greg has his hand on my shoulder as i'm talking to you about this so i i feel that for you i can tell you it, it can be different for different people but for you i can tell you i'm told that he's here in this room with us i'm told that he's by your side and i'm told that he's going nowhere without you so i think that uh, that answers your question i think he's going to be faithful to you look you if you find someone new in your life if you go out there because you know you can go out there you've got life left in you and if you want to find another partner or you meet someone unexpectedly who you fall in love with nobody is going to deny you that it's okay that is really okay and that's what you should do because you should live your life to the full that will not change his feelings towards you and when it is time for you to come over he'll be waiting now i've i've had clients of mine who have worshipped adored and loved a husband who has then died and five years later met another husband uh, who ha they have worshipped and adored just the same and that one dies and i've had that person that woman actually i'm thinking one particular woman in, and it's happened many more times than once but this one particular woman she was lucky enough to find two lovely men who worshipped and adored her and she was in a relationship with a third woman she came to see me and i had her two husbands not ex because you know they they didn't she didn't divorce or anything but they had the two husbands coming together to tell her that they'd met each other as she really liked each other and like the guy she was going out with now so um and uh, and still loved her and still nurtured her and still were going to be there for her when she when it was her turn to go over so i think the same applies to you all right i hope that makes you feel a bit better and uh, and i can tell you sending lots of love and kisses greg is reminding me to look at him i'm looking and he sends you lots of love and kisses so okay uh al it's your turn i think or not well go, go ahead carolyn Got a couple questions about Grey Eagle. First one comes from Dean. He would like to know how did Grey Eagle find Rosemary? Was he told to go to you? And was it by chance? He says, I doubt it, but. Nothing by chance. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as chance. You don't mind me talking with my mouth full, do you, Dean? Mm -hmm. um, all right. I think I've lost my napkin somewhere. Um, Grey Eagle and I knew each other prior to our, my coming here. We have been together for a long, long time and have worked together prior to my coming here, prior to his coming here. Remember that he did have his time on this earth plane also. I'm going to suggest you read The Eagle and the Rose if you want to know more about that. Um, because I was not aware not conscious of the fact of gray eagle for many years while i was living on this earth I, I had no memory of him i had no memory of being with him or working with him until the time that i needed to have that memory and i tell the story and it's quite a long story dean so i'll tell that story in the even the road so you need to i know you've read it you need to hop back in there and read it again Al, let's have a question so um, related to that, Penelope asks, uh, she, first she says, you, you both look like you're having so much fun. Um, but then she asks, I'm interested to ask. Yes. Uh, um, so, there's another one there. Look, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, she asks, uh -oh. I'm, I'm interested to ask Grey Eagle if he is the spirit guide for other people as well. And is there a way that I can know my spirit guide, her spirit guide? 
And who is this question from? Penelope. 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 Good morning, Penelope. Um, all right, let's do the <laughs> let's do the spirit guide thing again. It does seem to come up. It does seem to crop up. Not everyone has a spirit guide. I know everybody would love one, but not everyone has a spirit guide. Remember that a spirit guide is someone who is a highly evolved uh, and very wise being who only works with those of us who work on a full-time basis in this in this realm. So if you work in this area, if you are a medium or a healer or what have you, you may find that you have need of a very wise and a very knowledgeable entity to help you. Otherwise, then you have your family, you have your friends. Um, you'd be amazed how many times uh, a family member maybe somebody you never even heard of um, will let themselves at some point be known. Uh, they've watched you as you were born. They've watched you growing up. They've watched you become, you know, whoever you become. And they take an interest in you and they try to help and guide you, as do many family members. And, of course, we all have our angels too. I would never help anyone to find their spirit guide because that's not how it works. If you're going to work in this realm and you need a spirit guide, that spirit guide will find you. Don't go looking uh, for it. And if you go to see, if you go to very often in spiritualist churches, or very often people who call themselves mediums or psychics or whatever, they'll give out they'll give out spirit guides like they're giving out sweets, you know, candies. But you know, oh well, you've got a, an Indian and you've got a nun and, and and you've got somebody else and somebody, and they give them out, you know, because it makes them feel, uh, you know, important perhaps, or they feel that perhaps that's what people want to hear. So they're giving you what they want to hear doesn't mean it's true in any regard whatsoever. Nobody came to me and said to me, "You've got a Native American." standing by you Gregor made himself known to me personally in a way that that was very powerful and again read the eagle and the rose and you'll find out how that happened uh it's a long story so you know i'm not going to go into it today we're too busy eating today for me to go into that long story but um you know it's be very careful what you know if, if you're not just think about it this way uh, the head of the New York hospital, for instance, the the, uh, the heart surgeon, head heart surgeon, chief heart surgeon, is not very knowledgeable, very wise, and so on, is not going to spend his time with a first-year nurse walking around with her all day, every day, checking to see how she's doing and what she's doing. It doesn't make any sense, does it? He's not going to waste his time. So when we're talking about this world of ours and all of the spiritual growth, and I know that you're all very interested, as am I, please apply some common sense to what you hear and what people tell you. Because 20 people can say, I'm a medium and I can see and I know about you. And probably out of that 20, you might get one or two who do know the real thing. Because... You know, for whatever reason, there are lots of people who are very, very well-meaning and very caring and very loving and also very misguided. So be careful what you listen to. Apply common sense to what you hear. Just because someone says, oh, I see somebody with you doesn't mean that they do. And uh, you need to listen to the evidence, and it has to be hard evidence. Alan, I know I'm talking to you here on this because this is a pet peeve of ours, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And, you know, is it, I mean, if you have, I mean, people focus on a lot, I think, wanting to have a spirit guide or wanting to have that guidance. But even without that, you can still connect to the spirit world, connect to your sixth sense, connect to all those things. Yeah. So, so less focus on that and more focus about just really connecting. Would that be accurate? I would say so. It's very important because if you are if you are a person who has a spirit guide, you need to learn how to listen. You need to learn how to know. You need to learn how to understand. If you want to talk to your parents and you really want a connection with them, you know, or somebody in the spirit world who you've lost and you love and you'd love to have a conversation with them, 
you're not going to do it until you can learn how to listen and how to sense and how to be aware. And this is why I think, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to our online lessons um, because, you know, this is where I can show you the things that you can do and the exercises that you can do to enhance what is already there because we all of us have a sixth sense. We just don't, you know, we've not honed it perhaps. And for all of you, who walk about with earplugs in and listening to your playing games or whatever it is. I mean, I play games from time to time on my computer, but not all day, every day. You've got to take the earplugs out. You've got to stop, you know, being so involved with all of the, you know, the, the wonderful technology in the world. You've got to at least have an hour every day where you just listen and you listen to yourself and you listen to your senses and your sensitivity. You listen to all of those you know, those incredible senses that God gave us with, you know, that, that we have within us. You've got to learn to listen to them and to hone them and to exercise them so that they can grow more and you can grow more. And that way you learn to raise your level of sensitivity. For most of us, our sensitivity is somewhere in here. Sometimes it's down in our boots because some of us don't have so much sensitivity. But for most of us, it's there and it's hovering and sometimes we feel it and sometimes we don't. But we need to learn how to raise our level of sensitivity to the point where we do this and this and then we connect with the spirit world in that way. So often, because we don't know how, sometimes you know we sort of miss. We're going like this the whole time. We're not joining we're not connecting so how can we connect and this is how we connect so you know there are certain exercises that we can do and there are certain things that we need to know to build on our building and learning to raise our level of sensitivity okay uh carolyn denise asks is gray eagle an earth sign as well very much so yes two earth signs working together yeah and uh, it's funny, but I, I, although I tell all of my students, look, I'm the chief, truly, Greg is the chief. <laughs> and I don't always listen to him, but boy, do I ever regret when I don't, because I always end up flat on my face when I ignore his words of wisdom as he tries to guide me, as we all do, as our angels try to guide us, as our families try to guide us. It's when we stop listening to that little voice inside of our head, that little, you know, that, that voice that says turn left or instead of right, don't go there, don't do that. We all have, has, have that little voice and sometimes it's our angel, sometimes it's our own soul talking to us, sometimes it's a family member, but we know we can guarantee every one of us when we ignore it, that's when we 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 falter, we falter, and I'm, I just have to say um, before I go any further, um, Caroline's opened these. Did you have one yes, already? I did. She's so greedy. <laughs> but these are my English shortbreads. The secret to an English shortbread is the butter. Use Irish or a good English butter. Irish butter has less liquid in it, less stuff in it than most other butters and if you know that that's the secret to it anyway while somebody's asking the next question who would it be yeah, uh, it would be carolyn i'm having a bite of the shortbread maggie asks and this is our maggie that we know oh, 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 sorry she's not usually able to join us on thursdays so who is maggie maggie yeah good morning darling how are you she said i know you've had questions like this before but let's do another go around okay I've had two flying dreams where there was no fear two days before not so good news. Was this from my loved ones? When you say two flying dreams, I take it that you're having these um, very often referred to out of body. You're leaving your body and you're flying and you're and uh, and and going somewhere or meeting someone in the spirit world. And I think, yes, I think that you're being perhaps given a little warning to be on your guard and to you know and to uh to pay attention you know very often in in our dream state we all of us at some point whether we're aware of it or whether we're not aware of it we leave our body we our, our soul leaves our body and travels 
And that's the time when we can meet our loved ones in the spirit world. And that's the time when we're actually doing this, you know, we're joining and we're doing this because we are then getting on the same level, our souls meet and get on the same level. And that's when you say a flying dream and that's what I think is happening to you. She, she, said, she said, yes, but I'm with my girls and my grandson during the flight. Yeah, that's okay too. And I think it's wonderful, but I think it's, yes, and that's very, it's very possible. But I think that, Maggie, I think it's a way of the spirit world trying to say to you, you know, be, be aware, pay attention. And they're just letting you know that, whatever it is that's happening whatever however bad or good because sometimes it happens to us if some some good news is coming along so however it is to be aware and to pay attention i think they're just letting you know that you're not on your own in this that you are that that, that those in the spirit world who love you and who care about you are with you while this is going on so i think that's you know that's a wonderful thing she also says she loves shortbread and you're so cruel <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my shortbread is so good it really is yes. it really really is good i'm gonna have another scone in a minute as well so anyway go ahead uh al question so azul asks good morning azul uh, you said hearing your name calling is a great gift i have a plane coming overhead sorry <laughs> Uh, you said we hearing your we can hear you. <laughs> hearing a name called is a great gift. I've heard my name a few times while in bed. Once felt a hand on the side of my head while falling asleep. Is there ever any way to know who it is? Yes, very much so. Sometimes listen, this is as all this is when you have to listen to the heartbeat of your soul and you have to listen to the voice of your soul how do you how do you do that you ask how do you do that there are different exercises as i've said we're going to be doing more of that on our online courses but i think you have we have a knowing sense and sometimes there's no reason why we know or seems to be no reason why we know but I suspect as all that you do know or you have a suspicion of who it might be, uh, someone who is very, very close to you and who loves you very, very much. Uh, when you want confirmation or if you want confirmation, what you have to do is you apply the three time rule. So you just wait and you watch and you listen and you find opportunities to allow this to happen again either through meditation or just uh you know just being aware and being open to whatever comes to you and uh just pay attention really just pay attention but listen to your let's say your instincts listen to the heartbeat of your soul your soul will speak to you if you want to know and you ask the question who are you you ask the question very quietly, who are you? At some point, whoever it is will make themselves known to you and they will show you. And you, you, it, this is difficult. When we talked, we've talked in um, another time about how we listen with our eyes. Well, we see with our ears, with every one of our five senses, we see, we hear, we are aware in a very different way than, than we do so physically. But we, um, you know, we, we sort of have to pay attention to our senses and we have to pay attention to, you know, what is going on around us and, and trust your instincts. And if you, if you want to know whoever this is and you feel that you hear a name or you pay attention and you, when I say you feel that you hear, that you feel that it's somebody or you sense that it's that person, I think you know who it is, um, then, you know, then go with that just go with it and allow that to you know to 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 drive you forward and to move you forward uh carolyn uh let's see linda says for a while i felt shaking on my bed i was told that the shaking was my dog hunter who crossed over i don't feel it often now uh, this is actually more of a statement than a question. Well, I will say that we did talk about this a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about my grandson. My daughter used to, um, when I put her to bed at, at night time, I'm going sort of from the age of about, anywhere from the age of five to about 12 or 13 or something. 
um, she would often, even before she settled down to bed, even before she put her head on the pillow, just as she, she would be about to put her head on the pillow to go to sleep, the bed would start to shake furiously. And of course, she'd get very, very scared and so on. Everything is about energy. And certainly that is the spirit world trying to get your attention, someone in the spirit world trying to get your attention, whether it's your dog or whether it's somebody else's, you know, it's it, they're trying to get attention. I've had it happen to me on many occasions and my grandson is now going through the same thing. Uh, and I think, uh, was it last week or the week before, I gave an exercise to all of you, to all of you who have children, or even if it's happening to you, go and take a look at last week's um, YouTube video and you'll, you'll see that I do give an exercise. It's designed for kids, but adults use it too. Don't be afraid. It's a way of the spirit or trying to get your attention. And if you say to them, you know, okay, you've got my attention. You can stop now. You know, get my attention in another way. Um, and you talk to them. You allow them to. You let them know that you that you know that they're there. Then you know. Then that. Then the extreme shaking should stop. And then you should start to listen and to pay attention to who it is you're trying to get. To, get your attention i do know i'm saying this so simply and i'm fully aware that it's very scary when this happens i know you can be so scared that all you want to do is dive under the covers but once you've got over the fright and you can reason it out and you know more about what's happening and you know why it's happening somebody's trying to get your attention then you can be a little bit calmer and you can deal with it in a in a much easier way okay carolyn well, let's see. We, or was that Al? I don't know. Uh, that I don't care. Any why the one of you? Do you have a question, Al? Uh, we have from Aunt Sissy. Um, do pets cross over? Yes. You took me totally by surprise. <laughs> um, because uh, I thought that was a given, but obviously it isn't. And I also referred her to your many videos on YouTube. Yeah. Check the videos. Um, we do have a question regarding what in the new talking. in the new book. Um, there is a story. The, the new book is called "A Walk in the Clouds." If you need to know any more, email me because it's not out properly yet. Um, but you can order it, pre-order it through us. We found we got the book back, and we found some mistakes, so we're having to fix the mistakes. But still, um, there is a story about my own experience and um i think throughout the books and i'm trying to think which book to recommend you i'd recommend them all perhaps if you're wondering about that but certainly the eel and the rose is where to start perhaps um and uh, we do talk about how pets do come to us and of course they do return to us and they do let us know that they're safe and that they're well and um some of us do have those experiences and some of us are not aware that their pets are still around them but they are. Uh, our, they are our loved ones and they care about us and they, you know, they join with us as often as they possibly can. Al, question. So um, in regard to, you know, Azul mentioned before, like someone, you know, touched uh, his side of his face. Uh, does it happen that, you know, when you have an experience, could it be more than one person that's connecting you in that instant? Can it be you know, a few family members, or is it always just one person connecting with you? No, very and, often you can get a whole crowd of people from the spirit world who decide for whatever reason to come to visit you. If you're going through a stressful time, or if it's your birthday, or something to celebrate, or something to commiserate, or if you just need strength, you'll find, a you know, you, you might have a whole crowd of people in, uh, in your family come to visit you. Um, there is usually one who is for and it, and it could it could, might be a different one each time but there is usually one who takes you know who who reaches forward and will touch you or stroke your face or what have you um and depending on what it is that you need depending on who it is that you need and depending on what kind of energy it is that you need at that moment in time but we can have one person from the spirit world visitors or we can have dozens of people at the same time visitors does the collective energy make them stronger? Collective Should energy, collective energy. When when a group—that's a good right. question, Carolyn. 
uh, when a group of people in the spirit world come together to uh, to connect with us, their collective energy can make that uh, that connection stronger. Uh, they can feel as a collective group. They can feel that they can surround you and support you. And and um, you know, very often when there's a there's that collective energy, we will feel a sense of peace or a sense of well being, or we'll just have this very very strong feeling that you know we have someone around us. It could be someone or some many someone's around. But yes, collective energy can be much much more powerful. And sometimes, for instance. You know, we had um, a young lady we sent healing to today who is feeling suicidal. Now, look, if anyone is out there and listening to this, you need to go see someone. Walk into a church. don't have to be a member. Walk into a church or uh, walk into a health clinic or go see a doctor. It doesn't have to be your doctor. Or, you know, just go find help. Do not deal with this on your own. Do not hide in a corner feeling that you're on your own. And very often in those circumstances, those in the spirit world will collectively draw close around you to try to help you, to boost you, to give you the courage that it will take for you to go and find the help that you need. But they will do it and they are there for you. Al. So you, you spoke about, um, you know, children connected, you know, last week, um, you know, it's, I believe that sometimes with my own children, I'll see spirits come through them in, in essence. Is that possible? And does that happen more? When you say come through them, what do you mean? I mean, like, you know, maybe I'll see my father's face in my son or in my oh, daughter, like I, something like that. It, like, is that, is that something that's, that is happening? And is that yeah. something that yeah. is more likely with children? Yes. Well, ch you know, children are so much more receptive and they have less barriers, don't they? Um, but um, I tell a story, and I can't remember which book it's in now, so you have to read them all. Uh, I tell a story of when my sister came to visit me, and at one point she was asking me, well, what do you do and how do you meditate? And, how, you know, and she was asking me all about, you know, uh, what it was I did and what it was I did with my students. So I, we, we were doing this little exercise. And I said to her, you know, just close your eyes, to, trying to show her, you know, how to meditate and how to give herself some healing, actually. And 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 I looked at her, and she's my sister, and for, for some, whatever reason, she was sitting on, sitting on the floor. I don't know why. And um, and so uh, it might have had something to do with a glass of wine that she was doing, I don't know why, I'm just kidding. Uh, and um, so I said to her, just close your eyes and just, you know, and before I'd finished talking, bef even before I'd finished talking, I, it was as if a, a shroud had been placed over her head, a white veil is the best way I could put it. It's almost like a wedding veil, this big white shroud was put over her head and where her features were, were my father's, as clear and as plain and as plain as could be and as I was seeing my father my sister was hearing him talking to her and uh, he was giving her a warning about an accident which actually too long a story read it in the book but the accident actually did come to pass her son who was involved in the accident was safe but uh, there are other people who were quite badly injured at the time um, and, you know, so people in the spirit world will find a way, if they can, to come to you. And, you know, as you said, Al, you'll see sometimes your father's face and your son's. And it's just his way of saying to you, hi, I'm, I'm here. Uh, but, you know, always pay attention to those things because sometimes it, it also means they might be trying to tell us something. Very often they just want to, you to know that they're there but sometimes they're trying to tell us something as well it might be something good don't think that every time the spirit world comes to talk to us it's something bad please don't you know don't don't want any of you getting paranoid about that at all uh carolyn starshine 68 asks good morning starshine 68 what if i love where on earth do people get these names from go ahead yes well they, they do tell you know you on the internet don't use your real names anymore and all yeah, that don't so. do that no. Okay, so she asks, what is what if a spirit comes to you but it freaks you out and you send it away? Can you ask it to come back? Of course you can, yes. Yes. And uh, mm. of course, you know, we've all had that oh god, go away, go away, I'm terrified, I'm terrified. And the minute 
it's gone you want to recall it how stupid was i how ridiculous i should have been calm i should have been easy i should have and so on and so forth my first uh sort of um conscious awareness of astral traveling i say conscious awareness of astral traveling i did exactly the same thing uh it started up i got so scared no 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 i'm not going there i'm not going there for many times many many times over the years and as i was growing up used to terrify me and then finally one time i said to gray eagle you know all right <laughs> yeah, i'll go there uh, uh, but don't let me go far because you know i was still scared you know remember those days when i was still scared of these things uh and i'm sure there are times that you know i, I would have experiences even now that might unnerve me a little bit so being scared is natural but yes you can get it back darling don't worry about that al do you have a final question for us I, I, I there are no more questions but just as a quick follow-up to that do um so so if you are afraid do the spirits know that you're afraid and are they coming you know knowing that they're you're going to be afraid so that you're better prepared next time like do they know that you're going to be afraid or is it a surprise uh, mostly, to them too? mostly they're so eager to talk to us that they forget that they were human ones and they forget that our reactions might be go away uh so very often they're so keen to do it that they you know they forget they forget that we're scared but if you're scared just say to them you're making me just in a just calm way as you can you're making me nervous right now you're scaring me a bit so you know so can you go away and come again another day uh just talk to them and they'll understand carolyn i know you have a question here one last question yeah? from denise when good you morning denise when you say your angels are you referring to like angel michael and the like uh, i'm yes i'm referring to those angels I don't know why we always see them in white robes with halos and what have you, but wings and stuff like that. Yes, I'm talking about those kinds of angels. And just for the record, when people used to talk to me years ago about, you know, angels with wings and halos and all of that stuff, it wasn't that I didn't believe. It was that I'd never seen one. And so if I've not seen anything or I've not experienced it, I'm the first one to tell you, I don't know. So I would say to people, when people ask me about angels, which they used to do all the time, uh, I would say, well, you know, I'm not going to say they don't exist. I'm not going to say they do. I've never seen one, so I don't know. And remember, all of you out there who are involved in this work, don't be afraid. Please don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Because, you know, other people might think we're all knowing or, and all seeing, but we know we're not, don't we? So, um, but then... Uh, there was an occasion I had a, a, a woman in America, I was in England at the time, and she was calling me on the phone. And this was before uh, FaceTime and Skype and all of those things. So it was just a phone call. And she asked her questions. And one of the questions that she asked was, you know, can you tell me who my angel is? And so I answered all the other questions. And I thought I'm going to do I d deliberately thought to myself, I'm not going to go there with that one. Uh, and she was so blown away by all the other stuff. I was happy. And I said, so I said to her, I made a mistake. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to ask me? She's crying at this point and excited and thrilled and so on and so forth. And I said, is there anything else you'd like to ask me? And she said, well, you didn't mention my angel. So I started to tell her that, you know, I've, look I, I don't really know about angels because i've never seen an angel before but as i as i was saying this to her i noticed that there was another woman standing in my study waiting to talk she looked perfectly ordinary to me she looked like a you know short little bit on the plump side uh graying hair beautiful uh, lovely skin beautiful smile on her face and so on and so forth she looked and uh you know and she smiled at me and i said oh and i said to the woman on the phone um you know i can't tell you about your angel but i do have this lady here and she tells me her name you know she's, she's connected to you and so on and so forth and i said she looks like anybody's grandmother as i'm talking to the woman on the phone 
this little lady begins to turn around and I'm thinking how weird is this she turns and she turns her back to me and as she turns her back to me I almost fall off the chair because I see her wings tucked nicely into her back you couldn't see them from the front at this point and I see her wings and then she turns around again to face me with this big beaming smile on her face because she knows I was going to say I've never seen an angel before but here she was not at all like we would imagine an angel to be very ordinary very sweet very lovely no halo uh at that point anyway and um and I I'm describing this to the woman on the phone I can hardly believe it myself and I'm having to say you know and I have this lady and so on and so forth and uh, and uh, she tells me she's your angel and she tells me that her name is Mary and I'll never forget that moment and since that time I've seen so many angels hundreds and hundreds over the years uh, different shapes different forms and i'm going to leave you with this thought as i start to prepare another scone for myself i'm going to leave you with this thought angels are in every corner of every street they sit with you on the bus they ride with you on the train they walk through the supermarket with you Wherever you go, angels walk amongst us. That angel might be that snot-nosed kid on the street, that kid that, you know, has no shoes and he's dirty and horrible. That angel might be that, that uh, tramp, hobo, as they call them in America, who's begging on the street and looking for food. That angel could be anyone. Could be simply a man standing, looking at you and smiling at you and just, you know, just for whatever. Angels come in disguise they are never where we think they're going to be and it's very hard if you were told tomorrow an angel is coming to visit you'd probably put on your best dress you probably clean your house you probably do all the stuff that you need to do and you'd certainly be on your best behavior wouldn't you knowing that an angel was coming but our angels see us as we really are and when we say things or do things that are not so nice they're not there to judge us but the smile dims and there's sadness in their eyes i know because i see this often but when we do something which they're proud of and which they're joyful of their joy shines out from them so just remember please i'm leaving you with this thought you may be walking in the supermarket getting on a bus riding in a train there may be angels all around you watching what you're doing, paying attention to who you are and how you're behaving. So try and be on your best behavior as much as you can, really, because our angels really do need us to help them, to help others. I'm going to leave you with that thought. I'm going to have another scone. Al, thank you very much for joining us today. Carolyn, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today. We're saying thank you to Great Eagle. If you need to connect with us, you will find us, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. You can email us. You'll find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and all of those other places that we do get to go. I have so many people writing to me on Instagram. I love you all. I cannot answer all the questions. I mean, I wouldn't have time to do anything else in my life whatsoever. Uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your wonderful, warm thoughts and your loving. And uh, again, email us, Rosemary at Rosemary Altea. Do we have anything else to say? The new book, you can get the new book, A Walk in the Clouds. Email us, we'll tell you how to get that, and when to get that, and so on and so forth. And in the meantime, until we meet again, um, there's a song in there somewhere. Um, please, 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 please have a very, very, remember your angels are watching, very, very blessed day. And click.